Fort George at Niagara-on-the-Lake, a place where thousands of British and Canadian troops did their duty, suffered hardships and lost their lives. But some linger on even today at the most haunted place in Canada. Fort George was built prior to the War of 1812 against the United States. It was built as a form of defense against any future invasion. The fort was sieged by the Americans. They almost burned the entire fort down. As a result of that, uh, a lot of soldiers from the War of 1812 remained behind, still doing the duties they did back in 1812. Kyle Upton takes people on a ghost walk of the fort at night. And trust me, people have experiences. Right now we are in the soldiers' barracks within the fort. This is the living quarters for the, the common person living within Fort George during that time. Uh, this room would be home to about 50 British soldiers. So soldiers' wives and soldiers' children would have also been found here in this room. Now this building is, uh, in certainly my opinion, the most haunted place at Fort George. Now uh, of the haunted phenomena, well, you name it, we've had it here, from the uh, standard haunting noises of footsteps when there shouldn't be footsteps, strange creaking, moaning, rapping, uh, right through to the apparitional phenomena. Now, obviously, uh, one of the worst things you can do to someone visiting Fort George during the day is to lock them in for the night. So the two staff that were stationed in this building on that particular day, John and Rick, I guess it was nearing the end of their day here, heading on to five o'clock, when they heard footsteps from the upper story of the building. Um, so Brick stayed downstairs while John headed up there to get whoever that was up there out. While arriving at the top of the stairs, he looked around through the gloom off in the back corner of the building. You could see the figure of a man standing there. And this gentleman was slowly making his way out towards the front of the building. So John addressed this fellow. Excuse me, sir, we're, we're closing up the building. If you could please follow me downstairs now. This guy just kept on walking. No nod, no eye contact. So finally, after chasing him right across the width of the building, trapping him into the front corner of the building, when Rick came up the stairs behind him, well, John paused, half turned, um, you know, to tell Rick, well, there's this guy here and he's ignoring me and I'm fed up. Turned back to the corner to confront this man only to find an empty corner. Now, most people at the fort just thought that John was crazy. He was making it up. You know, he was a nutcase, whatever. Um, so, obviously, there's a lot of joking that uh, John had to put up with over the next couple weeks. So, about three weeks later, when again, John and Rick were in here. Again, it was close to closing. Again, footsteps were heard from the upper story. Well, this seemed like a staff practical joke. I mean, there's no way. Too many coincidences. Well, John and Rick, they're not going to let someone make idiots out of them a second time. So Rick went tearing off to the other half of the building, went up the stairs there. John headed up these stairs. Well, he got up there, looked around. No one in John's room. No one in Rick's room. That's strange, because they both heard footsteps up there. So they start chatting back and forth, of course, across the length of the building, you know, trying to figure out whether the other guy had actually looked, you know, in the back corner, behind this, behind that. Well, just for an instant, they couldn't see each other. But something moved across that doorway and blocked the view of the other guy on the other stairs. Uh, now, sadly, uh, neither of these two gentlemen stayed around long enough to figure out what it was up there, because they were down the stairs and out of the building just as fast as they could go. But they both agree that whatever it was that crossed that doorway, well, it had moved from the flag bastion side out towards the parade square in the same direction as that gentleman John had seen a couple weeks earlier. Staff quickly christened the ghost of the upper story with the name of Irving. So uh, Irving he has remained. When you talk about ghosts at Fort George, again, it's important to realize the way our brains are set up, we don't just see what's out there. We see what's out there plus our interpretation. We can very easily interpret all kinds of stimuli, especially ambiguous ones, as something altogether different. And especially if we're nervous, especially if we're highly suggestible, one time, a, a woman and uh, her young child were touring one of the block houses, and the child went off to play, and the mother was talking to the tour guide, and suddenly they turned around, and her child was having a conversation, but they couldn't see anyone there. The mom seemed quite surprised because she didn't know that the little kid 
I ever had an imaginary friend before. So when the guide walked up to the child, he said, uh, who do you see? What are, what are you talking about? He said, there's a soldier here. He, he's talking to me. He's asking me, what are we doing here? He wants to get some sleep. It was even more unusual that uh, this little boy talking to the man at the back of the building was able to describe the uniform of the man, uh, which matches exactly with the uniform of a British soldier that was stationed here in, uh, in 1812. The officers' quarters is where the rich guys that were in command of the garrison got to stay. Now the mirror behind me is an original mirror dating back to the 1790s. Uh, but the rather unusual thing about the mirror is that a whole lot of people claim that they can see a woman in the mirror. Staff here at Fort George, visitors here at Fort George over the last 30 years have claimed to see a young lady with long, dark, curly hair. And the other interesting thing is that the mirror is not an original piece in the fort. So therefore, it uh, throws light on possessions actually being possessed by spirits. So a lamp, photograph, or a mirror can often end up um, exhibiting odd activity. Now, the first time I heard about it was from a little girl. Could have only been about five or six years old. And she wanted to tell me about the pretty lady in the Cinderella dress that she'd seen here. Now just recently, something has changed. These people have started reporting seeing this woman outside of the mirror. That periodically here at the fort, they have staff as well as visitors who when approaching this building can hear music, the piano forte playing inside the building. Sometimes report people singing, people talking in here, only to find when they step through the door there's no one around. Back in 1994, uh, a woman came up to the tour guide at the end of the tour, claiming that she was a psychic and that she had a new story for the tour guide. That she watched as a little girl, about seven or eight years old, came down the stairs, sat down and listened for a time. Uh, sitting just behind the tour guide as he told his story. And as the tour exited from this building, this little girl followed along on the rest of the tour for about two-thirds of the remainder of the evening before disappearing. This psychic described this little girl as, uh, as wearing a white shift with no shoes on and having blonde shoulder-length hair. Now in 1812, you wouldn't have found a soldier's daughter here in the barracks with shoulder length hair. Hair cut short because of the bugs and the lice and such? Absolutely. Just didn't match up. But throughout 1995, we had uh, trios of women that would report something white, white shape coming down the stairs, a little hand holding onto the banister, elsewhere in the fort, sort of looking behind the tour and seeing uh, a little girl sort of peeking from behind one of the buildings. She'd make eye contact, giggle, and then hide uh, back behind the corner. By that point, we were telling the psychic story, as well as using her name for the ghost, Sarah Ann. Uh, this uh, person from town said, you know, we were on a tour of one of the local cemeteries, and we're pretty sure that we saw a tombstone marked Sarah Ann. And indeed, there in St. Mark's uh, Church, there is a, a tombstone marked in loving memory. Sarah Ann died July 19th, 1840, in the seventh year of her age. Is this our Sarah Ann that's buried at St. Mark's in town? I suppose we'll never know for sure, but blonde hair, shoulder length, not terribly likely for 1812, but for 1840, definitely the style. Many people that take the tour of Fort George end up having numerous spiritual experiences while in the fort. For example, there's a tunnel area at the far end of the fort that leads to a sentry post. People have incredible experiences in this tunnel. Fort George staff members coming down here at the end of the day to close up the tunnel and the lookout tower itself would pass somebody else dressed in historical clothing, not a member of the staff, but who they assumed would be a 
reenactor visiting here during the day, only to find that uh, questioning later that nobody came out of the tunnel. So we would have numerous people that would look back on coming into the tunnel and see a little figure, child, standing just outside the door, staring back at them. But what does a little ghost have to fear from the darkness? In the last six years, I guess things have changed. People on the tour have reported seeing a little girl, somewhat long, luminous blonde hair, wearing a white shift, joining us. Something unusual about the uh, nature of the stories here in the tunnel is uh, the report of figures of shadow. Not shadowy figures, as uh, many of our ghosts are described elsewhere in Fort George, but figures of actual darkness composed of shadow, materializing and dematerializing here in the tunnel, what these things are, why they are different from the other ghosts here in Fort George, we don't know. Uh, nor do we know what it is about the tunnel that perhaps attracts these things. People visiting Fort George today need to come with their camera, hoping that they might pick the image of a spirit up. I think that uh, visitors to such a fort, particularly on the ghost tour, they want to have an experience. They need to have an experience, something that they can believe that to them tells them that spirits actually exist. And this is the fort to do it in. You're guaranteed at least some experience if you're walking that fort late at night only with a lit lantern. Coming up on Creepy Canada, a Valentine's Day tragedy in White Rock, British Columbia leads to suicide. Now the broken-hearted spirit searches for her lover at the Washington Avenue Grill.